while we are talking about all these fun things. Now oh, there's something in my eye. Probably cat hair. That's what you get when you have cats in your home. Chirp YouTube channel. Welcome to another video. Since we have been talking about playing outside for the last few weeks, it came to my mind that potentially it might be difficult for some people to remember how to play outside. For most of us, it's been quite some time since we were children, and I've discovered that having children somehow seems to do something crazy to the brain where people forget even more what it was like to be a child because they're focused on raising a child and being successful with the whole parenting business. And it seems to put a larger chasm between the adult and the child mindset. As we discussed in that video, outside nature is great for kids and we want to get them out there as much as possible. Of course if we've forgotten how to play outside we might need some hints so I am going to give you a list of hints today and some inspiration for being outside with your child. Typical kids at past a certain age you can kind of just shove them outside and they will find things to do. With our kids who have disabilities, who have delays of communication difficulties, social challenges, sensory difficulties, most of the time they're going to need a little more supervision, which means that we're out there too. And we need to sort of be providing opportunities. Here are some things that we can do that don't require much preparation, that don't require much money or equipment, but that can be really fun and motivating for kids. We want them to be motivating because they, we want them not only to be outside, but we want communication and social interaction to be happening. And these kind of activities help inspire those kind of circles of communication that we discussed in that video. First, I want you to think about plants. There are a lot of plants in the world. You can choose to walk around your neighborhood and look at plants, or you can choose to look at plants that are in your yard if you have one. Maybe on your patio, you might, even if it's very small, you could have some plants. Talking about the plants is good if your kid's interested. If not, this isn't a good option. Pick something else. You can plant plants. Don't worry if you're not good at it. Just try and you can talk with your child about what went wrong. You can talk about maybe we watered too much. Maybe we didn't water it enough. If we didn't water it enough, maybe we could get a cactus because they need almost no water at all. They're very happy to be dry. There are options for all environments. It even can be cheap. You could take something growing from the sidewalk, even if it's a weed, plant it in a pot and bring it to your house and try to grow it into something. Because weeds can even be wonderful, beautiful flowers. Do take caution though. Make sure that you try to investigate what kind of plant that you have adopted. It, because a lot of plants are toxic for house animals, like cats and dogs, especially cats are very sensitive to a lot of plants, and you don't want anything that's going to harm your child or you either. So there is a secret benefit to the Google Photos app that I just discovered recently. There's a little button, so if you take a picture of the plant and then you look at the bottom of the app and it will have a little picture that says lens, click on lens and it will identify the plant for you will identify whatever the picture is. It's amazing. I took a trip and I took pictures of all these crazy plants I'd never seen before and Google Photos Lens was able to identify all of them. It was amazing. So anyway, you can do that and then you can read more about the plant to make sure that it's safe for you and your family of human and non-human members. You may also consider an herb garden I ordered one for my dad for Father's Day that comes in a little kit. 
and he's planning to grow it in the winter on his windowsill so that they can have fresh herbs even in the winter. That could be very fun. Once again, make sure what is safe and what is not safe for your particular family. Another thing about plants is that I'm gonna consider trees a plant because of course they are a plant. One of the things that you can do outside is to take out a blanket or a towel or if you have grass, just use the grass. Lie on your back, look up into the treetops. I love doing this, I find it very relaxing. And I think I mentioned this in the nature video that I did, but there's something that happens to our body that is good when we gaze into the distance. Normally, in our modern human lives, we are looking at things that are very close up to our eyes. Not only does it mean we are more likely to need spectacles, like me, but it means that there's something that isn't happening in our brain that is meant to soothe us. Looking into the distance helps to soothe us, our sensory systems, our minds, and it helps us to be more creative. So looking into the distance by looking up into the sky could be a very fun activity to do outside. There's lots to talk about because you might see birds flying over, you might hear sounds, you might see an airplane, you might smell some good smells from these trees. So give that a try. Also keep in mind that you can smell things while you're outside. Plants often have smells. Maybe you have some mint in your garden. Maybe you have some flowers that smell really nice. Go around and sniff the flowers. People are always saying that we need to take time and smell the roses. What if one of the things that's most beneficial to your child, social interaction, being outside in nature, enjoying smells and sights and sounds and your presence, maybe that is also something that is really good for you to take those minutes, even if it's just five or 10 minutes, to be outside to notice the beauty of nature and to experience it, to share it with your child. Or your students, if you are a teacher, get outside. You and your kids need it too. Of course, if you have plants, you can spend time watering them. I have cacti and succulents in my yard because I, as well as a couple big trees, because I live in the Arizona desert and nothing else has survived. I'm not very good at taking care of plants that need a lot of maintenance, but I am really good at taking care of plants that are adapted to this environment. I do still water them, however, and I have a little teapot I found at Goodwill, and I water each one every once in a while. I have a few that are in pots that friends brought me that haven't died, <laughs> so I continue to water those. And it's very soothing. When my nieces came over, they wanted to water every single plant. And they did. And the plants appreciated it because we don't get a lot of rain here. So you can spend time watering the plants. You can even trim plants. If you want to help your child practice grip, then get a little plant nipper and practice nipping off some of those sprouts that grow off the bottom of trees or a branch that is too long, just trim it off just a little bit. You're pruning. Talk about pruning and how sometimes a tree needs a branch cut off so that the energy can go to the other branches. It's very fun. You can keep learning about plants and your kid is learning from you. While we are talking about beautiful things that you might see outside, I encourage you to help your child to get involved in photography or painting. Some artistic ways to notice the world in more detail. A lot of our kids who have disabilities in one area experience the world very deeply in other areas that we might not. And of course there are very many people in the world who have a lot of artistic skill and if our kids with disabilities have skills in the area of artistic expression, then if we don't expose them to those opportunities, we won't know. Plus, taking pictures of stuff really helps kids to be more interested in what they're seeing and the things that you can talk about and communicate about. I gave a camera, a, it was a very inexpensive little digital camera to a young friend of mine who has autism years back and I was fascinated by what she took pictures of. 
people's feet, a random building. It, it, it was very strange, and most of it was blurry. But it was fun for her. She felt like a grown-up. She felt like she was doing art. And it was really fun to see those pictures. Of course, you can take pictures too. This is one of my favorite ways to have a creative outing, to kind of refresh my brain, is just to go out for a walk and take pictures of cool stuff that I see. Sometimes it's some weird scribble on the sidewalk. Sometimes it's shoes hanging from a tree. Sometimes it's actually an animal or some natural phenomenon. But sometimes it's just weird things that kind of appeal to me for some reason. Your kids need creative outings too, and this is one that can be really fun. Outside, active, artistic, what could be better? Of course, you might want to talk with your kid, look at those pictures later, talk with your child about which ones should, should we print one of them out? Should we put it on a big canvas and hang it on your wall in your bedroom? Should we make a collage? Should we print it on a t-shirt? Should we make a little flip book of our favorite walks that we've been on? There are all sorts of things to do with these pictures besides just keep them on the camera or put them in your photo app. You also can have a, a picture frame, a digital picture, picture frame, where the pictures will rotate. Then you can be reminded of all the fun adventures that you have done together. Don't forget messy outdoor activities, such as running through the spring, I guess that's not really messy, but wet slash messy, running through the sprinkler, drawing with chalk on the driveway or the sidewalk, playing with paint or mud or dirt or sand, blowing bubbles. Bubbles can be really sticky and messy. What a good idea in the heat of the summer to blow bubbles, get very sticky, and then run through the sprinkler. And of course there are game type of activities. Playing catch, kicking a ball to each other, rolling a ball to each other, pulling a wagon full of stuff. Not exactly a game, but it still works those muscles and for a lot of our kids that's really beneficial. You could play tag, you could play hide and seek. Now I realize, as a grown up, these sound like very industrious activities. Most of us are used to sitting a lot of the time. Most of us are not used to playing games, especially games where running is involved. But I would encourage you to do it anyway. If you are new to this and you're going to play an active game, keep an eye on yourself, especially if it's hot outside, and don't overexert. Kids naturally do have a lot more energy and <laughs> they bounce back really quickly. So make sure to drink enough water, be cautious, you know, all those things that we say to grown-ups when they're going to do some sort of activities. I don't think that a game of tag will probably kill you, but be cautious and maybe work up to 15 minutes of tag. Start with five and then move on to something else. Don't forget hide and seek. Did I already mention that? That can be super fun and hilarious because kids do not know how to hide. They think that they're hiding if they can't see you. They don't realize that if I can't see you, you might be able to still see me. And this is really good practice for something we call theory of mind. Let's talk about theory of mind. Theory of mind is my knowledge that you have a different experience than my experience. So for example, as a person who understands theory of mind, who has theory of mind in my brain, I realize that Although I can see my camera filming me, you cannot. To you, it looks like I'm just talking straight to you, which I kind of am, but there is this piece of technology in the middle. People with autism oftentimes don't understand theory of mind. So they, un they assume everyone has exactly the same experience that they have. Everyone knows exactly the same things that they know, which of course is not true. So playing hide and seek is a good way to work on this. We can talk about it. You couldn't see me, but I could see you. That could be a really fun activity. Very active, very outside, you gotta be engaged. But it could be really fun and it adds a lot of social excitement to your relationship with your child or your students. 
Don't forget other art activities you could also do. I mentioned painting. It's a good thing to do outside. I have some canvases and some acrylic paints. Of course, wear your old clothes because acrylics do not come out. And then allow your children to just go crazy with the canvas and hang it up in their rooms later. What fun. Don't forget, you can make rubbings also. So you can have a crayon or some chalk and a piece of light colored paper. You can put a leaf or some bark underneath and then rub it and it will make a beautiful artwork. That is a super fun outside activity to do also. And I haven't yet mentioned anything about the animals. One of my favorite things about my current yard, which is a desert yard, which doesn't have any grass, it's all rocks, one of my favorite things is that we still have a lot of green back there because of the trees and the cacti and the succulents, but we also have quite a bit of wildlife. One of the reasons is because I have installed an inexpensive fountain back there. So of course, in the heat of the summer, birds flock to the fountain and they take baths in it and they drink from it. We've had a squirrel, we've had a, a little burrowing owl, we've had bigger birds. We had a heron there one time. We have had a lot of interesting creatures back there. I also have a bird feeder that I fill with bird seed almost every morning. So right outside my kitchen window where the cats can see there is a bird feeder and usually there are small flocks of birds and I get to see also the birds that are traveling through as they migrate. So it's very fun for me. That is another thing that Google Photos Lens can help you with. It can help you identify birds that you see that you might not be able to recognize otherwise. But I also have some bird books, and that's really fun. If you have a child who loves animals, it's fun to be able to look around you at the animals and label them and learn about them, figure out what they eat and where they go in the winter and all of those kind of fun things that can make outside a lot more fun. Consider making a wind chime or hanging one up that will remind you that outside is calling you and it's pretty out there. It will also help your kids if there's wind coming up, if there are storms, it brings something to discuss. I had one little friend with autism who was fascinated by weather. She was always talking about weather, storms coming in, monsoons and wind and rain and thunder. Thunder and lightning were her favorite. And so having some sort of a weather station, like a little thing that tells you the humidity and the wind speed and the temperature outside and the temperature inside and maybe even some other things like what the UV index is or that kind of thing. Those can be really fun opportunities to reel your child's engagement in and have a good back and forth sort of discussion about the weather. The wind chimes can be a low energy, low money way to keep your ears on what's happening outside. There you have it, some ideas of things that you can do outside, just in case you might have forgotten some of the crazy things that you did as a child, or just in case you don't spend all that much time outside, but you know you probably could and you think your kid might enjoy it. I hope some of these ideas really inspired you and that you will get outside and enjoy it. Even if the temperature is not perfect, pick the right kind of day, pick the right time of day, and it can be great. I hope you have a wonderful week and I will see you in my next video. Bye.